All right, ladies and gents, this is Jacob Tucker back for our first FCL video. In this video, we're going to learn about how to execute basic scripts in FCL and uh, Next.js. So, yeah, this, let's just dive right into it. I'm not going to make these introductions that long. So, um, I've downloaded a basic, uh, you know, Next or cloned, I guess is the proper term, a Next.js project on, onto my computer. I haven't done anything with it. Um, the only thing I've done is cleared some boilerplate code. And uh, I've installed at on flow slash FCL version 1.0.0. So throughout this entire series, uh, it may change, but we're going to be using version 1.0.0. And uh, the reason for this is because this is a new version of FCL that's, you know, really exciting and part of why I'm doing this series. And it's going to help us uh, interact with the Flow blockchain a ton. So in order to install this, you know, either copy and paste this into your dependencies and uh, in your package.json and run npm install or just run npm install at on flow slash FCL like that. Um, and that should install FCL for you. And it's okay if it's not exactly version 1.0.0. If it's 1.0.2 or something like that, that's fine. Um, but I, you know, I would recommend installing this specific because it'll help make sure there's no disconnect between the video and what you're doing. So let's go ahead and just make a simple button called print hello, okay, in our uh, index.js. So what this is going to do is, well, let me not forget to run npm run dev. This is going to launch our application so we can actually view some stuff on our browser. Let's go ahead and do that. Nice. So I'm going to open up my console here so that there's uh, we can see if anything gets printed. But obviously right now, if I click print hello, nothing is getting printed, right? Because nothing's happening. So let's make a function here called async function print hello. Um, and in here, we're just going to do console.log um, stuff loser. All right. And then when we click this button, we're going to say on click equals print hello. All right. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and print hello. And now we get a bunch of sup losers in our in our console, right? So woohoo. Now we are officially a loser. All right. So we click that, a bunch of them appearing here. Cool. The reason for that is because we put an on click handler onto our print hello button so that this function gets run, which prints uh, sup loser. Nice. We are succeeding. So now let's actually do some stuff with the blockchain, right? With FCL. So in order to do that, Let's import um, config and query um, from at on flow slash FC. All right. These are two things we're going to use to actually help us uh, with our application currently. So first things first, before you actually use FCL, you have to configure FCL to, to actually point to the blockchain. Um, you know, you have to tell it, do I want to point to testnet? Do I want to point to mainnet? Right. And the answer right now is going to be testnet. Um, you know, may, the difference between the two, I've talked a little bit about this in my, in my Cadence series, but, you know, testnet is this testing environment. It's where you can play around with code. It doesn't really matter if you make a mistake, it's okay. But on mainnet, it, it's, a, it's a big deal, right? If you make a mistake on mainnet, you're kind of screwed. Um, and so we're going to play around with testnet, obviously, because when you're developing, you want to be on, on a testnet environment. So how do we tell FCL we want to be on testnet? Well, you can write config, which is coming from right here, okay? And then here you can put dot, you can say dot put, and we're going to say access node dot API should point to HTTPS rest dash testnet dot onflow dot org. So what this line of code does is this says, let's take, um, you know, let, let's take FCL and point it to testnet by saying, you know, make sure the access node dot API is pointing at rest testnet dot onflow dot org. Okay. And this was on mainnet. I'm pretty sure we could just put mainnet here, but let's just keep it on testnet for now. So this is telling FCL, so tells FCL to point to the uh, flow testnet blockchain. So it knows how to, you know, deal with cadence code and stuff like that. Um, all right. So now what we can do is inside of our print hello function, instead of console logging sub loser, we can say const response. So we're going to execute what's called a script. So await FCL, or we can say await query like that and open up a little object in here. So in this object, we can, uh, one parameter we can provide is cadence. And this is the actual cadence code we want to execute with this script. So inside here, let's do public function main. And again, this is all cadence code string. And we're going to say return. Um, Jacob is so much cooler. All right, which is obviously true and a fact. Um, so then what we can do is just say console.log response. All right. So again, I'm not going to explain cadence code too much. But this is a this is script code. You should recognize that where it's a public function main returning a string, and the string is Jacob is so much cooler than you. 
and then we put a wait here, right? Because we're executing something that returns a promise. Um, so we have to await it, and then we can console.log response. And we put async as the function because we were awaiting inside of it, all right? So now when we go ahead and actually print hello, we should get Jacob is so much cooler than you, right? So this is a very simple example of how to execute a script on the Flow blockchain. Um, and in the next video, we'll talk about how to supply more complicated arguments to our function so that we can actually do some, you know, cool like additions and stuff like that uh, and passing in arguments that we want. So hope this was helpful. And we're going to explain a lot more about actually passing in arguments and stuff like that in the future. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.